Iran's Sarif claims Israel may try to provoke war with attacks on U.S. and Iraq. Iran's Foreign Minister Mohammad Javad Zarif on Saturday accused Israel of attempts to provoke a war between the United States and the Islamic Republic by planning attacks against U.S. interests in Iraq. In a tweet Zarif wrote, New intelligence from Iraq indicate that Israeli agent provocateurs are plotting attacks against Americans, putting an outgoing, President Donald, Trump in a bind with a fake Cassius Belly, act justifying war. Be careful of a trap, at real Donald Trump. Any fireworks will backfire badly, particularly against your same BFFs, he added. Zarif's accusation comes at the eve of the first anniversary of General Qasem Soleimani's killing by a U.S. airstrike in Baghdad on January 3, 2020. Iranian officials have been warning for weeks of hard revenge against the United States. Zarif has not offered any evidence for his claim that Israel is involved in a conspiracy of engineering attacks on U.S. forces or its embassy in Iraq. On December 20, Iran-backed Shiite militias fired rockets at the U.S. embassy that led to a stern warning by Trump. Some friendly health advice to Iran, if one American is killed, I will hold Iran responsible. Think it over, Trump tweeted. Iran at the time rejected any role in the incident but Iraqi security forces moved against the militia group they suspected of involvement. The U.S. has twice flown B-52 heavy bombers over the region as a warning to Iran not engage in any adventure. Javad Zarif lies, Javad Zarif said of Iran's regime, we do not jail people for their opinions. That is a lie. Since the beginning of the 1979 Islamic Revolution, Iranian people have been imprisoned for their religion, political affiliations and for expressing their opinions about the regime itself. Just recently, May Kolazi and her daughter Sagi Fadai, two Baha'i women living in Mashhad, were put in prison simply for practicing their faith. Satra Bahishti of Robat Karim was a blogger who died in November 2012 while jailed for criticizing the regime on Facebook. He had merely expressed his opinion. Iran spokesman says Biden can lift Trump executive orders on first day in an interview with Fars news agency, Saeed Katib's aide, the Iranian foreign ministry spokesman has said Iran was prepared for any scenario over tensions in the Persian Gulf, where the United States this week deployed a nuclear submarine and flew B-52 bombers before redeploying the aircraft carrier USS Nimitz link is external. We are not looking for tension, but we are very serious about defending our interests, Katib Zayda said. We will not start any action but our response to any action will be definitive and strong. Katib Zayda anticipated the situation after January 20, when President Donald Trump leaves the White House, suggesting that President-elect Joe Biden can reverse all of the executive orders Trump has issued about Iran on his first day in office as president. Trump has imposed draconian sanctions since leaving the 2015 Iran nuclear deal, the JCPOA, Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action. The spokesman stressed that as the U.S. had previously signed the 2015 agreement and voted for the U.N. Security Council Resolution 2231 that endorsed it, Washington needed to prove that it is trustworthy. While Iranian President Hassan Rouhani has expressed a desire to revive the agreement, meaning Tehran returning to the nuclear limits and the U.S. seizing sanction, he has put the onus on the U.S. to act first. Katib Zayda said that Foreign Minister Mohammad Javad Zarif and Biden had not exchanged messages and that Iran needed to see how Biden's signature work stop. Nothing is going to happen before the U.S. returns to the full compliance of the Chkpoa. On Soleimani and Iraq, Katib Zayda said Iran could not forget the killing of General Qasem Soleimani whose convoy was hit by a U.S. drone in Baghdad on January 3. 
the lead up to the first anniversary of the death of the commander of Iran's extraterritorial Quds Force and nine others has led to calls for revenge in both Iran and Iraq. The spokesman said Tehran plan legal action in several countries to bring those responsible to justice and that Iraq was also clearly responsible for the case as the country's former Prime Minister Radil al Mahdi has acknowledged. A report in July link is external, from the United Nations Special Rapporteur on Extrajudicial Killings, Agnes Calamert, said the killing was unlawful as the U.S. had not provided evidence of an imminent threat to life. Katib Zayda reiterated Iran's condemnation of attacks on diplomatic facilities in Baghdad, a reference to a recent rocket attack for which militias allied to Iran were suspected. Warning Israel asked about the implications of military cooperation between Israel, the UAE and Bahrain, which predates this summer's normalization agreements. Katib Zayda said Iran did not recognize normalization of ties between Israel and the Persian Gulf Arab states. He said Israel was the root cause of regional insecurity, that Iran would make no compromise on our national security and that Israel knew very well to expect a destructive response if it approached Iran's red lines. On relations with Saudi Arabia, Katib Zayda said that Iran wanted cooperation with Saudi Arabia, which needed to stop begging to buy security from the forces that are the cause of insecurity in the region. Iran had still not received a Saudi response to its Hormuz peace plan, a proposal for collective security link is external, Put forwards at the UN in September 2019, Katib Zayda said, Saudi rulers should feel mature and confident before they can reach to a mechanism for regional cooperation. On Zarif's future, asked about rumors that Zarif might stand for president in June's election, Katib Zayda reiterated the foreign minister's own statement that he had no plans in that direction. He, Zarif, has said this in public and private meetings. It is unlikely that Zarif would pursue any career different from what he is following right now. An abrupt reversal of Iran strategy, Pentagon orders aircraft carrier home after weeks of escalation and threatening language, the Defense Department is sending mixed messages as the anniversary of the death of an Iranian general nears. Washington, the Pentagon has abruptly sent the aircraft carrier in its home from the Middle East and Africa over the objections of top military advisors, marking a reversal of a weeks-long muscle-flexing strategy aimed at deterring Iran from attacking American troops and diplomats in the Persian Gulf. Officials said on Friday that the acting defense secretary, Christopher C. Miller, had ordered the redeployment of the ship in part as an escalatory signal to Iran to avoid stumbling into a crisis in President Trump's waning days in office. American intelligence reports indicate that Iran and its proxies may be preparing a strike as early as this week and to avenge the death of Major General Qasem Soleimani, the commander of Iran's elite Quds force of the Islamic Revolutionary Guards Corps. Senior Pentagon officials said that Mr. Miller assessed that dispatching the Nimitz now, before the first anniversary this Sunday of General Soleimani's death in an American drone strike in Iraq, could remove what Iranian hardliners see as a provocation that justifies their threats against American military targets. Some analysts said the return of the Nimitz to its home port of Bremerton, Washington, was a welcome reduction in tensions between the two countries. If the Nimitz is departing, that could be because the Pentagon believes that the threat could subside somewhat, said Michael P. Mulroy, the Pentagon's former top Middle East policy official. But critics said the mixed messaging was another example of the inexperience and confusing decision-making at the Pentagon since Mr. Trump fired Defense Secretary Mark T. Esper and several of his top aides in November, and replaced them with Mr. Miller, a former White House counterterrorism aide, and several Trump loyalists. This decision sends at best a mixed signal to Iran, and reduces our range of options at precisely the wrong time said Matthew Spence, 
a former tall Pentagon Middle East policy official. It calls into serious question what the administration's strategy is here. Mr. Miller's order overruled a request from General Kenneth F. McKenzie Jr., the commander of American forces in the Middle East, to extend the deployment of the Nimitz and keep its formidable wing of attack aircraft at the ready. In recent weeks, Mr. Trump has repeatedly threatened Iran on Twitter, and in November top national security aides talked the president out of a preemptive strike against an Iranian nuclear site. It is unclear whether Mr. Trump was aware of Mr. Miller's order to send the Nimitz home. The Pentagon and General McKenzie's Central Command had for weeks publicized several shows of force to warn Tehran of the consequences of any assault. The Nimitz and other warships arrived to provide air cover for American troops withdrawing from Iraq, Afghanistan and Somalia. The Air Force three times dispatched B-52 bombers to fly within 60 miles of the Iranian coast. And the Navy announced for the first time in nearly a decade that it had ordered a Tomahawk missile firing submarine into the Persian Gulf. As recently as Wednesday, General McKenzie warned the Iranians and their Shia militia proxies in Iraq against any attacks around the anniversary of General Soleimani's death on January 3. But on Thursday senior military advisers, including General McKenzie and General Mark A. Milley, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, were surprised by Mr. Miller's decision on the Nimitz. The Navy had sought to limit more extensions to the carrier's already lengthy deployment, but commanders believed the warship would stay at least another several days to help counter what military intelligence analysts considered a growing and imminent threat. American intelligence analysts in recent days say they have detected Iranian air defenses, maritime forces and other security units on high alert. They have also determined that Iran has moved more short-range missiles and drones into Iraq. But senior Defense Department officials acknowledge they cannot tell if Iran or its Shia proxies in Iraq are readying to strike American troops or are preparing defensive measures in case Mr. Trump orders a preemptive attack against them. What you have here is a classic security dilemma where maneuvers on both sides can be misread and increase risks of miscalculation," said Brett H. McGurk, Mr. Trump's former special envoy to the coalition to defeat the Islamic State. Some top aides to Mr. Miller, including Ezra Cohen Watnick, one of the White House loyalists newly installed as the Pentagon's top intelligence policy official, raised doubts about the deterrence value of the Nimitz especially when balanced against the morale costs of extending its tour. Some aides also questioned the imminence of any attack by Iran or its proxies, an assessment reported earlier by CNN. Pentagon officials said they had sent additional land-based fighter and attack jets, as well as refueling planes, to Saudi Arabia and other Gulf countries to offset the loss of the Nimitz's firepower. On Friday the top commander of Iran's paramilitary Islamic Revolutionary Guards Corps said his country was fully prepared to respond to any American military pressure amid heightened tensions between Iran and Washington in the waning days of Mr. Trump's presidency. Today, we have no problem, concern or apprehension toward encountering any powers. Major General Hossein Salami said as a ceremony at Iran University commemorating the anniversary of General Soleimani's death. We will give our final words to our enemies on the battlefield, General Salami said, without mentioning the United States directly. Iran's Foreign Minister, Javad Zarif, said on Thursday that the Trump administration was creating a pretext for war. Instead of fighting COVID in U.S., at real Donald Trump and cohorts waste billions to fly B-52s and send our armadas to our region, Mr. Zarif said in a tweet. Intelligence from Iraq indicate plot to fabricate pretext for war. Iran doesn't seek war but will openly and directly defend its people, security and vital interests. 
In another provocation from Iran on Friday, Iran notified international inspectors that it was about to begin producing uranium at a significantly higher level of enrichment at Fordo, a plant that is deep under a mountain and thus harder to attack. The move seemed primarily aimed at putting pressure on President-elect Joseph R. Biden Jr. to rejoin the nuclear agreement with Iran. There was little activity permitted at the Ford O plant under the 2015 deal. The notification to the International Atomic Energy Agency in Vienna, the United Nations group that oversees the production of nuclear material, said that Iran would resume production of uranium enriched to 20% purity. That is the highest level it produced before the nuclear deal, which the country justified as the time as necessary to make medical isotopes for its Iran research reactor. Fuel enriched to that level is not sufficient to produce a bomb, but it is close. It requires relatively little further enrichment to get to the 90% purity that is traditionally used for bomb-grade fuel. The move was not unexpected. Iran's parliament passed legislation recently requiring the government to increase both the quantity of fuel it is making and the enrichment level. But the choice of doing that production at Fordo, its newest facility, was telling. The plant is built deep underneath a mountain at a well-protected Islamic Revolutionary Guards base, and successfully striking it would require repeated attacks with the largest bunker-busting bomb in the American arsenal. It would take months for Iran to produce any significant amount of fuel at the 20% enrichment level, but the mere announcement could be another red flag for Mr. Trump to rekindle bombing options. U.S. defense officials divided over potential for Iranian attack on eve of Grim anniversary. The U.S. flew nuclear-capable B-52 bombers to the Middle East Wednesday in the latest show of force meant to deter Iran, as defense officials remain divided over the risk posed by the regime and the Iraq-based militias it supports. Pentagon officials say the military muscle flexing is meant to warn Tehran off attacking American interests or personnel in the days surrounding the January 3rd anniversary of the Trump administration's assassination of the powerful Iranian leader General Qasem Soleimani. At the same time, Acting Secretary of Defense Christopher Miller decided Wednesday against a push to extend the aircraft carrier USS Nimitz's deployment to the Persian Gulf, sending it out of the region in an explicit de-escalation signal to Iran, according to a senior defense official. The conflicting messages could reflect divisions within the Pentagon where a second senior defense official tells CNN that the current threat level from Iran is the most concerning they have seen since Soleimani's death. Officials cite new intelligence that Iran and allied militias in Iraq may be plotting attacks against U.S. forces in the Middle East. For example, Iran has been moving short-range ballistic missiles into Iraq prompting the U.S. to deploy additional military assets to the region. Yet others in the Pentagon contend that the threat is being exaggerated, with the first senior defense official, who is directly involved in discussions, telling CNN that there is not a single piece of corroborating intel suggesting an attack by Iran may be imminent. Asked about pushback on the threat, another senior military official told CNN, the intelligence isn't perfect as you know, it never is, but we do see several planning efforts underway and if even some of them are true and they execute they could kill several Americans. This official went on to say that while nothing is 100%, there are some indications that the posture and messaging by the US has changed Iran's calculus. It's all very uncertain right now but we want the Iranians to know that they should not miscalculate and that we are not trying to provoke them and they should not provoke us, the official said. Military options Iran's foreign minister Javad Zarif charged Thursday morning that the U.S. was creating a pretext for war. Instead of fighting COVID in U.S., 
at real Donald Trump and cohorts waste billions to fly B-52s and send armadas to our region, Zarif said in a tweet. Intelligence from Iraq indicate plot to fabricate pretext for war. Iran doesn't seek war but will openly and directly defend its people, security and vital interests. Later Thursday, Major General Hossein Deegan, the military adviser to Iran's supreme leader, addressed President Donald Trump directly in a tweet, warning him not to turn the new year into a mourning for Americans following the flights. Trump has fueled some of the uncertainty, reportedly asking in a mid-November meeting for military options he could use against Iran. He then threatened Iran after a December 21 attack on the U.S. Embassy in Baghdad that senior U.S. officials, including Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, attributed to Iraqi militias affiliated with Tehran. Our embassy in Baghdad got hit Sunday by several rockets. Trump tweeted from the board Air Force One after a December 23 White House meeting on Iranian threats. Three rockets failed to launch. Guess where they were from, Iran. Trump then offered some friendly health advice to Iran, if one American is killed, I will hold Iran responsible. Think it over. A defense official tells CNN that chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff General Mark Milley is paying extremely close attention to the situation. The military doesn't believe an attack is imminent but is taking all precautions to ensure they deter Iran while protecting U.S. forces. The B-52 flight was the second time this month the Pentagon has sent the nuclear-capable bombers to the region. It follows the Navy's rare December 21 announcement that it had sent a nuclear-powered submarine through the Persian Gulf, accompanied by guided missile cruisers. U.S. Central Command, which oversees military operations in the Middle East, said in a statement that Wednesday's B-52 flight was meant to underscore the U.S. military's commitment to regional security and demonstrate a unique ability to rapidly deploy overwhelming combat power on short notice. Before Miller called back the USS Nimitz, which had been due to leave the Gulf, CENTCOM Commander General Kenneth McKenzie had been pushing to extend the warship's deployment there, in what might have been the longest aircraft carrier deployment in many years, the first senior defense official told CNN. This official expressed concern that some within the government are painting the situation with Iran as more dire than it actually is and are preoccupied with the potential for retaliatory attacks by Iran to mark the anniversary of Soleimani's assassination. After Soleimani was killed in Iraq by an American drone strike in January, Iran responded with a major missile attack on U.S. military bases in the region. Now. Intelligence gathered by the U.S. is indicating a possibly imminent attack by Iranian-backed militias on U.S. forces in Iraq, although there is no certainty, a defense official tells CNN. Nonetheless the concern is significant enough that additional protective measures for U.S. troops have been taken, this official and a second defense official tell CNN. Both declined to specify the measures being taken. Three U.S. defense officials tell CNN that Iran has been moving additional weaponry into Iraq, including short-range ballistic missiles, an arsenal that officials believe could be used to strike American targets. The second senior military official said that the U.S. has intelligence indicating that militia groups have been meeting with elements of Iran's Quds force, an expeditionary military force that Soleimani previously led later adding that the U.S. had evidence of militias planning for complex attacks in Iraq that would require Iranian assistance to be successful. There has been a number of troubling indications of advanced planning and preparation for attacks in Iraq that appear aimed at U.S. military and U.S. interests, one U.S. defense official said. Officials stress that there are no plans or any preparations being taken for any offensive action directed at Iran and efforts to reinforce U.S. troops in the region are about deterring attacks, 
not about conducting a preemptive strike. This story has been updated with tweets from Major General Hossein Deegan and Iran's Foreign Minister Javad Zarif and comments from a senior U.S. military official.